Welcome to all of you. Uh, this is the second part uh, of uh, this uh, tutorial series about uh, mechanical seal. Uh, in the first part uh, of the this tutorial series, I discuss about the working principle of mechanical seal and uh, what are the best practices uh, to operate any centrifugal pump to avoid mechanical seal failure. Now, in this part, I will discuss about different type of mechanical seal. Mechanical seal can be divided into different types based on its design or based on its arrangement. For example, a mechanical seal can be divided into unbalanced type of seal or balanced type of seal based on its design. It can also be div uh, divided into pusher type of seal or non pusher type of seal again based on its design. Based on its arrangement, it could be of uh, single seal or multiple seal. Now, again, single seal could be of inside mounted or outside mounted. Now, multiple seal can be a pressurized type of seal, pressurized type of dual seal, and even in pressurized type of seal, dual seal can having back to back arrangement or face to face arrangement, or it could uh, be dual on pressurized seal that is called tandem seal. Now, in this uh, part of uh, video, I will be uh, focusing only on the mechanical seal types based on its design and in the next part, I will discuss about the different type of mechanical seal based on its arrangement. Okay. <coughs> now, before I define uh, what exactly is balance seal or an unbalanced seal, let us first uh, try to figure out the forces acting on the two faces of any mechanical seal. Uh, this is uh, rotary part and this is a stationary part and this is the two seal faces. Now, if you look closely, there are some forces which try to close these two seal faces okay? and there are some forces which try to open these two seal faces. For example, if you look closely, you will find this uh, a spring is in compressed form. So, it will try to regain its natural position. So, it will exert a force in this direction. So, it will try to close these two forces. Okay. Now, the fluid inside the stuffing box will be having some uh, stuffing box pressure and it will exert a hydraulic force in this direction and it will try to close these two seal faces. The liquid film in between the two seal faces will exert a hydraulic force in opposite direction and it will try to open these two seal faces. <coughs> so, if I write all these forces numerically, <coughs> I can write uh, the force by a spring as a closing force, the hydraulic force of a stuffing box as a closing force and the opening force uh, by the liquid film as opening force. Now, if this clo uh, this closing force becomes equal to the opening force, uh, then these two different uh, directions forces uh, balance out and this type of uh, seal design is called balanced seal design. Now, if these two uh, forces that is closing force does not equal to opening force, then there will be a net force and this type of seal design is called unbalanced seal. Okay. Now, <coughs> if you ask how I can uh, uh, discover whether my seal design is unbalanced or balanced by just visual inspection, for that if you draw a line from this spring and if you find that line crosses the two seal faces, then that type of seal design is unbalanced seal. Now, if you draw a dr line uh, and if your line does not cross the two seal faces, then that type of seal design is usually a balanced type of seal design. Now, to go in depth, uh, let us uh, write uh, numerically all those uh, uh, forces which are acting on the two seal faces. Now, this is rotary part, this is a stationary part and the outer diameter of the two seal faces is uh, D2. The inner diameter of the two seal faces is, uh, uh, is uh, D, uh, D3 and the diameter of this uh, shaft is D1. Okay. 
Now, if you look closely, the stuffing box uh, pressure, the hydraulic force by the stuffing box pressure acts uh, throughout the uh, throughout this uh, seal faces up to this shaft. Okay, so for this closing area, you can uh, uh, calculate as uh, pi by four uh, this d two square minus this d one square because this closing force also act up to this area. Okay. Now, if you calculate the opening area, then this uh, uh, this will act from this point to this point. So, area will be equal to pi by 4 d2 square minus d3 square. So, obviously, closing area is greater than opening area because of this section. Okay. Now, coming to the pressure part, the pressure <coughs> exerted by the stuffing box uh, because of uh, stuffing box pressure, the hydraulic force, uh, the pressure inside the stuffing box is uh, PS that is a stuffing box pressure and the pressure of the liquid film in between the two seal faces, uh, <coughs> uh, the in between the two seal faces could be anything between the stuffing box pressure and the atmospheric pressure because here the pressure is a stuffing box pressure, here is the uh, atmospheric pressure and in between the two, uh, these two points the pressure will be uh, below a stuffing box pressure and above the atmospheric pressure. So, there could be a linear variation like uh, from this point to this point the pressure will reduce from a stuffing box to atmospheric pressure linearly. Uh, it can also reduce uh, in different fashion like concave or conve convex. For simplicity, let us take an average force, uh, average uh, pressure uh, between these two points uh, as a PS uh, a stuffing box pressure plus atmospheric pressure divided by 2. That is uh, arithmetic mean. Now, if you uh, since uh, in general a stuffing box pressure uh, is much higher than the atmospheric pressure, so we can neglect this atmospheric pressure. So, we have a closing force is equal to a stuffing box into closing area, a stuffing box pressure into closing area and opening force is equal to a stuffing box pressure divided by 2 that is average pressure into opening area. So, obviously closing force is greater than opening force because pressure is also high and area is also high. Okay. So, in this case closing force is much higher than the opening force. So, this is an unbalanced type of seal. Now, this type of seal is not recommended when the stuffing force, uh, stuffing box pressure goes beyond 10 kg because in that case, uh, the closing force uh, will be much higher than the opening force such that there will not be any liquid film between the two seal faces uh, because this closing force is much higher than this opening force. It will be in direct contact and uh, there will not be any uh, liquid film between these two seal faces and the two seal faces will ultimately worn out, uh, wear out and the cell failure will occur. So, to avoid this problem, uh, people invented a different type of arrangement so that uh, these two forces uh, balance out that is closing forces become uh, opening forces and for that they, uh, they uh, put a sleeve on the shaft uh, such that closing area reduces, uh, so that closing area reduces and uh, closing force become opening force. To write it numerically, uh, this is a sleeve, so the outer face diameter is again d2, the sleeve diameter is d1, shaft diameter is d3. Uh, so, this of course closing area is much lower than the opening area. Uh, closing force is equal to a stuffing box force into closing area and opening force is equal to a stuffing box for, for pressure divided by 2 into opening area. Now, we design balance seal or we design the uh, sleeve uh, diameter such that these two forces become equal. So, if we equate these two forces, you will find that closing area becomes opening area divided by 2. Now, this closing area divided by opening area is defined as balance ratio. Now, if your balance ratio is below 1, then this uh, seal is close to balance seal and uh, uh, it can sustain a higher stuffing box pressure. Okay. Now, for all this uh, uh, discussion, I did not took uh, uh, spring force. So, a spring for if you account this uh, spring force, then balance uh, uh, ratio becomes slightly 
uh, it will deviate slightly from 0.5 in general if balance ratio is greater than one then that is an unbalanced seal and that cannot be used for higher stuffing box pressure and if this balance ratio is below uh, one then it is close to balance seal and it can be used for higher pressure application okay now balance seal uh, sorry uh, mechanical seal can also be divided into <coughs> pusher type of seal or non pusher type of seal based on its design. Uh, now to explain these type, uh, these different types, uh, we know that uh, the rotary part of mechanical seal is usually made of uh, uh, softer material like carbon and the stationary part of mechanical seal usually made of, of uh, harder material. So what happens during operation, this softer material carbon wears out and it creates a gap between the two seal faces. Now to compensate this gap the rotary part must move such that <coughs> to maintain uh, such that uh, to uh, uh, it maintains the face closure between the two seal faces. Now if this compensation took place by the pushing force of uh, hydraulic force by a stuffing box and a spring force uh, such that this o-ring moved in this direction to compensate this gap then this type of uh, seal is called pusher seal because uh, uh, <coughs> because uh, uh, the pushing uh, force by the uh, hydraulic force and uh, spring force this o-ring moves and finally this uh, face closure maintained okay now because of this movement uh, in all pusher type of seal this o-ring is in dynamic condition and also because of this dynamic condition when this o-ring moves it, cre it creates a wear on this shaft and this wear area is called fret. So pusher type of seal having inherent uh, problem that it creates a fret on the shaft. Also when this uh, carbon faces uh, uh, wear out that solid carbon uh, build up ahead of o-ring also at that time some uh, stuffing box liquid will come out uh, between the two seal faces and it condenses and forms solid ahead of this o-ring so what happened ultimately this blocks the movement of this o-ring and so when further faces wear out then this uh, face closure uh, cannot occur and ultimately seal will fail prematurely seal will hang out because of this uh, solid build up and seal will fail prematurely. Now to avoid these two problems that is fretting problem and the seal hang out uh, there is a different type of seal design called non pusher type of seal. There is a fixed uh, or a static o-ring that is secondary seal is in a static uh, condition there won't be any pushing force and the movement of o-ring to compensate the gap caused by the uh, carbon face wear. Uh, to compensate the gap between the carbon face wear, uh, in non pusher type of seal there is a different seal component called vellum. It could be of course uh, metallic or elastomeric whatever it may be. Uh, when this uh, uh, the uh, face wear occur, this elastomers or metallic bellow uh, expand and maintain the face closure. So this uh, uh, create, uh, this avoid the uh, soft fretting or soft wear and also when this uh, solid build up occur because of this uh, carbon face uh, uh, material and the, uh, and the stuffing box liquid uh, condensation, uh, this does not create any hang up. So ultimately non pusher seal, uh, seal uh, does not have these two problem which uh, arises due to pusher type of seal design. Okay, now uh, I again use different type of uh, different uh, uh, links uh, to create these slides uh, mainly from uh, I used uh, uh, images from Flowsort websites and also used different uh, links. I would like to give credit to all those links uh, and uh, images uh, and in the next part of my video, I will discuss about the different type of seal based on its arrangement. Thank you.